What's going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. And in this video, we're gonna do something a little bit different. All right, so as you may or may not know, I've had this uh, 1970 CL350 project in the background of a lot of the videos that I've done. Okay, it's been a project of mine for probably over a year and a half. Um, it's been touch and go. Obviously, I work on uh, other motorcycles all the time, trying to make content. I spend a lot of my time over inside of the inner circle, um, trying to get content out to them as well, a little bit more in-depth type stuff. But this project has gone on the back burner for far too long. Okay, it has taken a long time to get it to where it is now. Inside of the membership, we went through the entire motor. I did a bunch of upgrades to the head, porting it. We did some different style tensioner systems, new cam, a bunch of different stuff, okay? So it's taken a long time. All that video content's been documented and it's inside of the inner circle, but now I just need to get it done, okay? I need to finish it. I want it to be done. I want to ride it, and I just haven't done it. I put it on the back burner over and over and over and over and over again to now the point where I'm just sick of looking at it. So I thought it'd be cool to let you guys in on this project, okay? So the first couple videos are going to be some time-lapse videos of me just getting it to where it is now. It may not go, I'm not going to go really in-depth too much. I'm going to show you guys some cool stuff, maybe stop and talk for a second um, if I find something that's interesting, or, but really it's just going to be a lot of footage. If you want to get real in depth and learn exactly what it was that we went through, it's in the inner circle. If you want to get on there, grab it. But I'm going to take you guys from this point A, where the bike started. It might just be some images, so on and so forth, but a lot of it's going to be just constant video until it is now. Okay, and where it is now is motor and frame. It can roll. We got some electric wiring done, but there's so much more to do. So much more. I'm, I still haven't started it after the motor rebuild. We've got fresh carbs on it. The carbs need to be tuned for what I want it to do. We gotta paint, we gotta run headlight stuff, turn signal switches, tail light, all the electrics have to be ran and done. And I haven't touched that yet. So what I wanted to do, because I feel like this is the only way that I can get this project done, is just to stick to a program, get it documented, and let you guys in on it. And start a new series on the 350. And I'm calling it specifically the Road to Start M. M is her name. EM. I don't know why. Don't ask. But it will be called the Road to Start M. And I'm just going to document every time I touch this bike, I'm going to record and we're going to go through what I'm doing on the bike. There will definitely be some teachable moments going on as far as electrical goes and a bunch of different stuff. But I just wanted to let you guys in. We can kind of ride this build out, as one would say until the point of completion. And it may, it may take a little bit of time, but I want to get this done. I wanted to let you guys in on it. I hope you guys enjoy this content, okay? If you do, make sure you subscribe to the channel if you want to stay up to date on every video that will be coming out. I'm going to try to stay scheduled. I'm going to try to stay consistent to give you guys content as frequently as possible, maybe even one video a week. I also have another project on the back burner, and that is a KZ400 that I'm rebuilding similar in style for a buddy of mine. And I want to get that documented too. Why not? Okay, I like building bikes. This is what I really enjoy doing. And again, I'm gonna make moments to teach you guys different things as much as possible, but I just want you guys along for the ride. So without further ado, let's get you up to speed on where the bike has been to where it is now.
frame back. Powder coating. Turned out exactly how I wanted it. I'm really excited about it. My spring arm, the 350, passenger pegs. I love the color. I love the way the light hits it. It's perfect. So now I'm really excited because I want to get this thing into at least a rolling chassis with you guys soon. It's positive news about the frame. I'm stoked. <laughs> wraps up part one of the road to stardom uh, series that we'll be going through that was we'll call that the chassis phase um, man looking back uh, going through those videos it takes me back man because it's been a long time coming um, from working in the shop then bringing stuff home and that whole situation it's just been a lot of fun um, the more I, I watch these videos the more I'm excited to get back into it and uh, get this thing right the frame, shout out to, uh, they were J&J &J coating, now they are SJS Industrial uh, Powder Coating here in Virginia. I think they're located in uh, Virginia Beach, if you guys are local. Um, they did all of the powder coating for me. It was awesome process, um, trying to figure out what color I wanted and having tons of images and tr finally honing in on one that I really enjoyed, which I believe it's called Black Chrome, I believe is the color of that. I could be wrong. Um, but I love how it turned out, and it was, it was exactly what I wanted, and they were very caring with that. So shout out to them big time. I'll put a link maybe to their website in the description. Again, for any of you guys who are local, um, if you um, are not, then you'll just seek a powder coating company near you and hope for the best. You know what I'm saying? Uh, the frame, when you do powder coating on frames, uh, one piece of advice, you're going to want to try to re-tap all of the holes. that they, Even though they do plug them up, um, sometimes they miss them, whatever. Just retap them, 
while you have it all apart, just tap every hole again with a nice tap and die set. Uh, just to make sure everything is safe. There will be areas where I might have to go back down to ground uh, on some of the coating, which I don't like, but that's the name of the game. You need a nice motor ground, so that may happen. Just try to do as clean as possible. That'll be more in the final steps, though. Um, the tires and wheels, you guys saw I did put out a, um, a truing we, uh, video on truing rims. I used the aluminum. I think they're Sun Star or Sun Blaze or whatever they are. The aluminum black rims that I wanted to go with on this. Um, I did go with a 18 front, 18 inch front. I believe the CL come with a 19, a larger tire in the front. I didn't want that look. I wanted it to be super symmetrical. So I went with 3.5 by 18 Golden Boy. These are very popular trial tire. Um, very cheap. I just like the look of them. Kind of aggressive. Might tap into getting another pair of rims and getting them all straight to put some actual street tires on there here in, a, in the future. But Golden Boy 3x50x18, by by when I had to spoke that front rim, it was different because I had a smaller rim for a hub that was for a 19 inch. So I had to end up going with the 18 inch rim spokes from Common Motor to cinch that all in. You know, because you have a different hub for a different size rim, and so you can't use the 19-inch spokes because otherwise they'll just be protruding through the rim, obviously. So that was some trial and error work on my part to get that to work. It ended up working fine. I had to end up, I think I ended up cutting some of the threads off of the tips on one of them. I can't remember. It's been so long, man. But um, a lot of the parts were painted black. One, one thing I also ran into was the center stand. Now that I have a smaller front tire in the center stand and as, as well as the, the tread depth on these are a lot different than a street tire. Putting the center stand down, both tires are still on the ground. I, what also caused that is because of the rear shocks, which are from Progressive, I believe, but they are a little bit longer. Okay, so that's a fun note as well. So longer shocks. Extend that swing arm down, bring the rear tire down more, and it allows for the center stand. When you bring it up on the center stand, both tires are still on the ground. So that could be a problem later on. Um, honestly, the best way to solve that, if I need to take the tires off, is just put the center stand on a nice piece of 1x10 or whatever. You know, just hike it up a little bit, and it'll be fine. No issues there. Um, I did get a seat for this. We'll go into that later when we go into the final stages of this bike, when we bring it together. Still deciding on paint scheme. I'll let you guys know in the future. I think I have what I want, but I don't like the CL tank look on these. They kind of look off to me, so that's to be determined. But um, let me guys let me know what you guys think. What what would look good on this frame? Everything else is pretty much blacked out. The engine, the rims, a lot of the components, extra stuff, the handlebars. A lot of stuff will be small hints of polished aluminum with black. But I need 10 colors, right? I think I have what I want. Let me know what you guys think. Um, so wrapping this up, next week we'll be going into just really pretty much the motor teardown. I'll go into more of that next video. But just taking the motor out and what we had to do. Lots of stuff. Lots and lots of stuff we had to do. A lot of it won't even make it to video. And I'll explain to that to you guys when it comes out. But um, lots of work to do. So next video, another time lapse video of just going through the motor, going down. Uh, may include going back up and putting it into the frame. We'll see. But yeah, that's it. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Let me know in the comments. Like it, share it, subscribe, whatever you want to do. Let me know what you guys think. I'm excited to dive into this thing again. Um, one more thing, Motorcycle MD is officially sponsored by my good friends over at Grip Clean. Um, I love them. I love them. these are their hand wipes. If you are in a garage that with no running water like me, having their tool and hand cleaner towels are phenom.com. They're awesome. I use them at work all the time. So much dirt and oil gets on my tools, and I love Grip Clean for it. They also have tons of cool hand pumices. Um, but you guys get 10% off just for watching the video in, in the description. Whatever you choose in, their, in your cart on their website, gripclean.com, in the promo code section, type in MOTOMD, M-O-T-O-M-D, 10% off your entire order. I love them. They were on uh, Shark Tank, believe it or not. 
the husband of the company is a rider. He rides dirt bikes all the time, and um, he's very good at it, actually, as you'll maybe learn to know. Great company, super friendly people, very personal. I love them. Give them a shout. Whoa! And on that note, I'll see you guys next time. As always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips or tricks for your next build, or my next build, or your daily rider. Later.